So welcome again to A Course in Miracles. We continue tonight with the lesson, lesson 101. Um, so we wrapped up the last session on lesson workbook lesson 100. My part is essential to God's plan. And we made it very clear the plan is really just the natural sequence of events where energy which has taken shape, taken form. So the sun's fallen asleep localized himself as a universe. The universe is the content of the dreaming son of God's um, dream. And in that dream, he's then localized himself as sentient body minds, 8 billion on this planet. Um, and each one of us is uniquely designed as a fractured part of the dreaming son of God's mind. And each one was fractured in a way to go and search for meaning, search for understanding what the sun is because when the sun fell asleep he forgot what he was the voice for god god's energy within us calls us to remember ourselves and so as each one of us returns through our own unique nature um body mind identity talent nature by following the inner guide which is the silent stillness the happiness within the joy the stillness which is our true essential nature. As we follow that nature, the plan unfolds through what appears to be the story of our life. But the story of our life is meant to be an effortless flow. It's meant to be a path of no resistance. It's meant to be a path where we spend willingly our time as often as we can in, in abiding, abiding in silent stillness. It's the... It's the Psalm 46.10, be still and know I am. That's really what it is. And that's what this lesson is. God's will for me is perfect happiness. What it's really saying, God's will, which is the natural essential nature of God, which is willpower. Willpower, not will to will, but the will to be, is God's will is really that we know our true essential nature is the essence called happiness because god's essence is flow and flow is natural and natural is happy so god wills for us to be in total flow in the flow which is essential to ourselves which is our natural nature the flow and and what is flow happiness when you're happy you're not thinking you're just being and that's what it really is and so today we will continue with the theme of happiness, which is our natural nature, our essential nature. This is a key idea. Remember, the Course is still teaching in concepts. It's a key idea in understanding what salvation means. Now, why understanding? Well, because of the curiosity of the body-mind identity. The ego needs to understand. Spirit has no need to understand because spirit knows itself. And knowing itself is knowing its essential nature. And when it knows itself, knows its essential nature, it knows its nature is the extension of source nature. So it knows itself, it knows its source, it knows God. And therefore knowing our essential nature is knowing God's essential nature. And then it, it gives us a very bold smack in the ear statement. It says, you still believe it asks for suffering as penance for your sin." And then it gives you a very, very clear statement. This is not so. So if you suffer, every time you're unhappy, every time you're in resistance, every time you're suffering from whatever, realize you're out of flow. You're out of alignment with your essential nature. Yet you must think it's so while you believe that sin is real, while you believe that sin is possible and that, that God's son can sin. That God's son, whether you believe it was just Jesus or would you get to the non-dual concept, you realize it's the dreaming mind which dreamt up both you and Jesus and everybody else. Whatever it dreamt up isn't a sin, it's just a mistake. And the old way of beliefs in, in the dogmatic Christian belief, which is what what comes before the non-dual understanding is some form of path that we embark ourselves, we call it religion, of some form or another, requires a belief in, in something outside ourselves 
to which we can look up to or forward to and follow. But as we get into the non-dual understanding, we start to realize that we are the extension energy of the pure energy called God. Energy, which is just energy. Just that energy, which is the flow of life force itself. The life force in each one of us is our shared essence with the life force, which is God. God is all life. God is all there is, is that life force. What appears as people, places, things, and events are temporal um, blocks, filters, preventing that life flow, that energy, that light from being pure light. It, the light is now filtered through ideas, and therefore light is seen as objects, space, time, people having experience. And, and this next three paragraphs is, is, is why very often students of a course get trapped because they don't understand what they're reading. What I'm now going to read, these next three sections are explaining what it is not. It's giving us a very clear explanation as to how the, man, the mind of man thinks and how, how wrong we have been. So it's really now explaining what God is not, what love is not, what we are not. What sin is not. Okay. So it says, if sin is real, then punishment is just and cannot be escaped. The world believes in punishment. Look at how many how thousands of people, millions of people are in jail or in some form of correctional system. Salvation thus cannot be purchased, but through suffering. That's what we believe. We believe we're meant to suffer. And if you look at the old dogmatic Christian beliefs, it's all about penance. It's all about paying penance for your sins. If sin is real, then happiness must be an illusion, for they cannot both be true. Now, that from a non-dual perspective is obvious. But for someone who believes God is dualistic and duality is real and true, then this makes no sense because then they would say, but why can't you, why can't you be happy? And, and this, well, you know, how can you be unhappy and happy? Uh, and then they say, well, it's the natural flow, ebb and tide of things, is like the cycle of, of the climate and the season. All of that is, is the egoic concept dream of the mind. It's not true. If sin is real, then happiness must be illusion, for they cannot both be true is the non-dual understanding. The sinful warrant only death and pain. And it is this they ask for. Obviously, no one asks for it for themselves. We certainly want other people to be punished if we don't like what they say and what they've done. I mean, when we look at a criminal, we very quickly get wrapped up in the idea of that horrible person, that uh, evil. But remember that every single person that has created an atrocity in this world at some stage was an innocent three-month-old baby that just sat, lay there, completely defenseless helplessness, and, and waited for mommy to feed it. For they know it waits for them and will seek them out and find them somewhere, sometime, in some form that evens the account they owe God. That's the belief. Sinful warrant only death. They would escape him in their fear. And yet he will pursue, and they cannot escape. And that's where the idea of the fear of God comes from. It's steeped in penance and suffering. If sin is real, salvation must be pain. This is the belief of dogma. Pain is the, is the cost of sin. And so very often when people find themselves ill and suffering pain, they, they ask, why me? And they... And they rack their minds there to try and understand what is it that they did that warrants the suffering. And so pain is the cost of sin and suffering can never be escaped if sin is real. And that's the belief of the world. And that's why we want to punish others to at least minimize our guilt. Salvation must be feared for it will kill, but slowly taking everything away before it grants the welcome boon of death to victims who are little more than bones before salvation is appeased. 
Its wrath is boundless, merciless, but wholly just. It's the justice of God and the vengeance of God and vengeance will be mine, said the Lord. We love to quote that. That's just, this is the ludicrousy of what we've imagined a vengeful being called a God must be. And this is the belief of 80% of the world, of varying religions, not just Christianity. Who would seek out such savage punishment? Who would not flee salvation and attempt in every way he can to drown the voice, capital V, memory of God, which offers it to him? Why would he try to listen and accept its offering? If sin is real, its offering is death. And met it out in cruel form to match the vicious wishes in which sin is born. If sin is real, salvation has become your bitter enemy, the curse of God upon you who have crucified his son. And then it makes us feel justified because, yes, God sent his son down as a man to suffer for our sin. God a being sent down his son a being a man. We beings are going to suffer because we were sinful. We're sinful because of the original sin of Adam. The whole thing is just preposterous, ludicrous, insanity at its worst with no sense whatsoever. And it's all based on, it has to be based on God as a being. So it's an entity. And he's created physical entities, spirits, and shoved them into bodies and into a, into a universe he made. One little planet Earth is where God has shoved his, his children and, and they sinned against him because we're vile. And then God had to send his son down to die a most painful, cruel death that whoever shall believe in him shall have eternal life. But the chances of anyone believing that is slim because we all have to suffer. And in our suffering, we often give up. This is the way of the world. This is, the, this is what the passes for faith and belief. And, um, and, and henceforth, we build all these churches and, um, and the ministers get fat and wealthy and they're perverted and they're sociopathic behaviors and their pedophilia and their sexual debauchery and all the nonsense that goes along with it and their materialism and greed. And that's the way of the world. And uh, that's why mankind seems to be so lost. Yet the answer within us all gently calls us to awaken to self and to know the gentle nature of our essential self, to know the gentle nature of our in eternal, essential natural essence, which is the loving shared essence with God. And so it says, you need the practice periods today and every other period. This is a course in thought reversal. This is a course that undoes the vengeful penance way of the world and looks for another way to recognize that we already are and have everything we're, we need in order to remember what we are. The exercises teach that sin is not real and all that you believe must come from sin will never happen for it has no cause. God didn't create anything sinful and God does not punish. Accept atonement with an open mind which cherishes, cherishes no lingering belief that you have made a devil an evil character of God's son. There is no sin. It's simply a mistake. You've fallen asleep and dreamt a dream that never happened in true reality, in God's reality. We practice this thought as often as we can today because it is the basis, the foundation for today and the rest of the non-dual understanding that this course brings. God's will, so just imagine pure energy, pure light. The will of that energy is its power. Its will power is the natural essence of that energy, which is source energy, of which we're an extension. And so if we're the extension, God's will and our will are the same. It's the extension which willingly shares itself as the love it is with all of itself and everything that is and what is there. There's only itself for every extending. 
God's will for you is perfect happiness because there's no sin and suffering is causeless. The cause of suffering is sleep. When you're awake to self, there is no suffering because there's no sleep as a cause. Joy is just and pain is but the sign that you have misunderstood yourself and henceforth God. Because you'll never understand God until you understand yourself. Fear is not the will of God. But turn to it in confidence that it will set you free from all the consequences sin has wrought in feverish imagination. And say this to yourself. God's will for me is perfect happiness. And just say it, but believe it. There is no sin. It has no consequence. All I need to do is eradicate my mind from these old, dualistic, dogmatic, vengeful God concept theories. Let them, let them just go. And worry not more anymore. Give no more thought to the old religions and the old dogmas of the world. You can't correct it by talking about it, worrying about it, being angry with it. Just let it go and focus only on the light within. And then give these five minutes gladly to remove the heavy load you lay upon yourself with the insane belief that sin is insane, completely insane belief that sin is real. Today, escape from madness. Madness is the way of the world. Madness is not realizing your essential nature. You are set on freedom's road. And now today, today's idea brings wings to speed you on and hope to go faster to the waiting goal of peace. So the goal is to truly know our nature. Our nature is peace. Our nature is joy. There is no sin. Remember this today and tell yourself as often as you can, God's will for me is perfect happiness. This is the truth because there is no sin. It's simply the error of falling asleep in which the idea of sin, fear, and guilt crept in, a tiny mad idea where the Son of God forgot not to laugh. And that's the important thing about this world is the minute you ask a question, who's asking the question? The minute you're resisting something or grieving something or fighting something or upset with yourself or the world or unhappy with it, stop. Find that source of that negativity, that, that resistance energy, and you realize it. There is none. It just seemed to appear. And the minute you gave it attention and, and it captured your attention and imagination, you spiraled into, into the becoming the very essence energy that, that prevented you from knowing yourself. Let that stuff go. Be still and know I am. Gratitude brings about the experience of knowing God's grace. Grace and gratitude go hand in hand. And then that brings us to lesson. Workbook lesson 102, because the opposite of being trapped in trying to remember what you are is knowing what you are. And knowing what you are is knowing what is willed for you as long as you will it for yourself. Willing it for yourself means aligning. To align with your own will is to align with God's will, which is the same will. And that will is lesson 102. I share God's will for happiness for me. So if God is pure energy, and that pure energy experienced in our body minds is happiness, then the natural essence of happiness, which is God, of which we are an extension of, means our natural essence is happiness too. So when, I, when we say, and we truly have to grasp this from a non-dual understanding, I share God's will for happiness for me, meaning my will is God's will, and my will is that I be essent the essential nature that I am. My essential nature is happy because God's essential nature is happy. God extends himself. God extends happiness. I'm the extension of God's happiness. Therefore, I am happiness. Happiness being at peace with all that is. The joyous essence, energy flow. And then the statement that it starts off with is vital. You do not want to suffer. No wonder. But we give it so much attention. You may think it buys you something. It may still believe a little that it buys you what you want. And even in the, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the Bible, Jesus said, 
really one of the most important passages was, I seek mercy, not sacrifice. You know, come to me as little children, innocent little children. I seek mercy, not sacrifice. Mercy is forgiveness. Sacrifice is suffering. Yet this belief is surely shaken now, at least enough to let you question it and to suspect it really makes no sense. It has not gone as yet. It still lingers on. It still comes back. Whenever we resist anything, it's back. Whenever we're unhappy with ourselves, it's back. Whenever we feel anxiety or something out of alignment, it's back. Catch it. Be aware of it. It is not gone as yet, but lacks the roots that once secured it tightly to the dark, to the dark and hid, hidden secret places of your mind, the mind that was steeped in duality, physicality, us and them me against the world, the world out to get me or me to conquer the world, all different ideas of littleness of the ego, grandiosity of the ego. Today, we try and loosen its weakened hold still further. Remember, the ego doesn't have you 100%, still grasping onto you. It's trying to dig its heels, but there's a part of us that has awoken to the realization, perhaps maybe just a possibility, maybe it's a little bit stronger within us, but it's becoming our clear conviction. We're becoming convinced as we become aware of the, our essential nature. And so today we try to loosen its weakened hold still further and to realize that pain is purposeless, without a cause, and with no power to accomplish anything. It cannot purchase anything at all. It offers nothing and does not exist. Just an idea in our dreaming mind. And everything you think or you thought it often is, is lacking in existence like itself. You have been slave to nothing. You've been slave to a dream of nothing. Be you free today to join the happy will of God. God's will is happiness itself. For several days, we will continue to devote our periods of practicing to the exercises planned to help you reach the happiness God's will has placed in you. So God's will, let me actually place it in you, because God's will is happiness, and your essential nature, your essence, your spirit, your shared being with God is made from the self, self same essence as God, and therefore it contains God's will in it. So the, the true essence of what you are, our life spark, our spirit, our true self is happiness itself. And we want to reach that essence in complete conscious awareness because that essence is awareness itself. And that it's awareness of itself in, in our understanding is that the awareness of being the energy called happiness and joy and peace itself. Here is your home. You are it. And here your safety is. You are it. That's why you're safe at home in the kingdom you've never left. But the body-mind identity, the identity of a universe, the contents of your dreaming mind seem to be all that's real for us. But when we surrender, be still and know I am, and find that essential nature, find our true essence, we realize that's true. Everything else is not. Here is, here is your hope, and here is your safety. Here is your peace. And here there is no fear. Here is salvation. Here is rest at last. We rest in peace awake. We don't rest in peace after death, the dying of a the body. There's no death anyway. We truly rest as we abide in silent stillness. Rest in peace is meant for the living, not for the dead, not for the, the dearly departed or back to the spirit world to return again and do it all over again. And so you begin your practice periods today with this acceptance of God's will for you. You are the extension of God's will. I share God's will for happiness for me, for the entire universe, which is in my mind. And I accept it as my function now. So earlier on, we learned we are our, one of our functions is forgiveness. Forgiveness is the function that dissolves the illusion or idea and then allows us to self-realize our essential nature. And so our essential nature is 
life force, the love, the joy, the peace, whose essence is our shared essence of God. So when I share God's will for happiness for me, I consciously, knowingly, in my awareness, am aware that my very essence is God's essence. And that essence is happiness, is peace, is joy. And that means that I willingly share myself as I share myself with all the activities of my own dream, thus dissolving the separation idea of my dream and making my dream activities, my dream contents in this dream appearing as universe to realize our true essence is happiness. And so as, as we learned in two lessons back, what you do for one, you do for all. And what one is doing, it's doing it for all of us. So we're all collectively sharing in our collective awakening. As we die unto self, as we die, die unto our body-mind identity, that's what it means to die unto self. The dying of the eager body-mind identity and the awakening of our self-realization that our essential essence, our nature, is God's essence. Then seek this function deep within your mind where it is there awaiting but your choice. You cannot fail to find it when you learn it is your choice and that you share God's will. We are God's will. How can we not share it? God willed us into existence by extending his essence and as he extended his essence, he created us. We are the extension essence of God's essence. That is his will. So we are that. Be happy. For your only function here is happiness. Happiness being the light. Being thyself knowing. Because what the world needs is happy learners. who realize there's no vengeance. There's no duality. There's only shared being. You have no need to be less loving to God's son, then he whose love created him as loving as himself. So remember, before you judge anyone in this world, before you attack anyone in the world, everybody's exactly where they are, whether it's singing kumbaya or being evil little shits in the world. They're exactly where they're meant to be. Don't focus on the world. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and change it. You're not here to save anyone. You're here only to save yourself the dreaming mind who is localized as you in your awareness. In my awareness, he's localized as me. In 8 billion awarenesses, he's, well, one awareness. In 8 billion localizations, he's 8 billion localization. So not only is the dreamer aware of his dream content, the entire universe, each part of the dreamer which is fractured and localized then experiences itself as a localization in the dream, thinking it's separate. When we recognize that our shared essence is not only in the dreamer's mind, but the extension of God, the dream has no choice but to collapse upon itself. Because now we've seen through the story. We've seen the paper on which the story is written. We've seen the screen on which the story appears. We've seen the blue sky in which the, the stories of the clouds seem to drift by. But we can never lose the idea of the blue sky or the screen or the paper in which the story is written. We're now aware that we, the dreamer, are the writer of the script called The Story of Illusion. We put the book away. We, we dissolve the clouds. We become aware of the blue, blue sky, the infinite likeness of being. We become aware of the screen as the very essence of what we are in which a myriad of stories appear. And we realize that screen is the essence of what we are. And that essence is our shared essence with God. Be happy for your only function is to be happy. You have no need to be less loving to God's son, to yourself and to others. than he whose love created him, you, as loving as himself. Besides these hourly five-minute rests, pause frequently today to tell yourself, that you have now accepted happiness as your one true function, as your true nature. And be sure that you are joining with God's will in doing this. You're not doing it because you're searching for something outside yourself. You're doing this because you're recognizing 
your essential nature. Your essential nature is happiness. And that brings us to lesson 103. And, and, and pay close attention to this incredible sentence, which is the, the heading of lesson 103. This is it. This is the non-dual understanding. If you get this line, you've got it. You, you've got it. God being love, love is God, God is love, is also happiness. So pure energy, pure light is love, but we also call that light energy, that love energy, happiness. So experience through the body-mind, it's just the joy of being, the infinite lightness of joyous being, which is us acknowledging our essence as the extension of God's essence. God being love is also happiness. Happiness is an attribute of love. It cannot be apart from it, nor can it be experienced where love is not. So if you find yourself unhappy, realize you can't leave God, you can't leave love, but you can think you're somewhere else. So you think you're experiencing a loveless environment because you realize not where you are. Love has no limits. Being everywhere, omnipresent like God. God is everywhere. Love is therefore everywhere and therefore happiness, joy is everywhere. And so is peace because it's the essential nature of that which is God. And there is no way God is not. And the entire universe, which is the content of the dreaming son's mind, the dreaming son is still in God. And even though the content may appear to be space, time with matter in, in dispersed, it's still in God's mind. It's still in God's essence. And so the very fact that it's appearing in the son's mind is given energy by the son's mind, which abides in the energy called God, love. And so behind the content of the dream is the screen, ever presence of love. Love is no limits, being everywhere. And therefore joy is everywhere as well. Yet can the mind asleep, the dreaming mind, deny that this is so, believing that there are gaps in love where sin can enter, error can enter, bringing pain instead of joy. And that's only because the son's asleep unto himself, not recognizing that his very essence is love. And therefore, if his essence is love, his real thoughts and his real imagination must be loving too. And so if it's not loving, he's imagining something he's not. Yet can the mind deny that this is so, believing there are gaps, but believing, not knowing there are gaps. This strange belief would limit happiness in our awareness by redefining love as limited. And what have we done with that limitation of love? We've ascribed it to body-mind, and it becomes special love. And what do we want? We want to acquire it. The story of Adam, he falls asleep, splits himself into two in his dream, and now he pursues his other half. We call that love or att attraction, the law of attraction. Or, you know, it's just pure um lust and desire to acquire because we don't believe we're enough. Okay. This strange belief would limit happiness by redefining love as limited and introducing opposition in what has no limit and therefore no opposite. Fear is associated then with love. Why? Because if we can gain it, we can capture it, we could lose it. If we lose it, we then feel loveless, we feel loss. We once felt completed by the other. And so now we fear the losing of it. We don't fear love. We fear owning it and it being ripped out of our hands, not realizing we can't own it because we are it. Can't be taken from us. We are it. While we think we're not, and we think it's outside ourselves, which is the human condition, we think we need to gain it or be rewarded for it or appease God that he may give us some of his love. Fear is, is associated then with love, and its result becomes the heritage of minds that think what they have made is real. These images with no reality, in truth, these localization images, 
bear witness to the fear of God, forgetting being love. We've forgotten what we are. He must be joy. This basic error will then will we will try again to bring to the truth today and teach ourselves. God being love is also happiness. We could say the same for ourselves. The self, the I am being love, is also happiness. So the I am is the me knowing the essential nature, my essence, myself. When I know myself, I know my source, I know my God. God being love is also happiness. When I know myself as that happy, then I know my God is happy too. To fear him is to be afraid of joy. It's never fear God, but extend the love he is by recognizing we are the love of God. Begin your periods of practice today with this association, which corrects the false belief that God is fear or vengeful, some vengeful dude up in heaven. Okay. It also emphasizes the happiness belongs to you because of what God is and because of what you are. Happiness belongs to you because it's your nature. It's not like it belongs as an attribute. It is you. You are that essence energy, that essence energy, which is the happiness, the joy, the peace, the love of God. Allow this one correction to be placed within your mind, within your awareness, each waking hour today then welcome all the happiness it brings into your awareness because it's always there as truth replaces the ideas of fear and joy becomes what you expect to take the place of pain. Joy becomes what you expect yourself to recognize yourself as. God being love, it will be given you. So you acknowledge it, you recognize, I will experience love because of what God is. I am love because of what God is. God is love because I'm an extension of that love. Bolster this expectation frequently throughout today. So the one expectation you're welcome to have that you should have because it's your inheritance. You're meant to know yourself. And so you're meant to, once you conceptualize this non-dual understanding, you can expect to know it for you are it. God being love, it will be given you. Bolster this expectation frequently throughout the day and quiet all your fears with this assurance, kind and holy true. And this is the beautiful, that 46, Psalm 46.10, be still and know I am. God being love is also happiness. Abide in the silent stillness and find that within yourself. Find that energy flow as you offer gratitude in silent stillness. You'll immediately feel that movement of joy, that first movement. So when, when the essence energy is still, it's at peace. The minute that essence energy moves in your awareness, that essence energy has no choice but to be recognized instantly as happiness, as joy. Peace become, peace and movement is joy. And it is happiness I seek today. What, what is it that we all seek? Happiness. We may call it God and Jesus and atonement. But what is it we want to know? We want to feel, we want to experience our very essence as happiness. Not these temporal happiness periods that come to our lives while we think we're body minds. They come and they go and then we search for it again. No, we want the reassurance, the, the certainty of the security of the permanence of the essential essence nature we are. We are it. And we're entitled to it. It's what calls us all. It's, what's ha it's what got us all to embark on a deeper journey to find whether we called it enlightenment or atonement or awakening. It's the very essence that calls us because it's the essence which is awake as our shared awakeness, our shared awareness with God. And it's happiness I seek today and every other day. It's all I want. The happiness I seek is to say to, I truly seek happiness above all else is to say, I seek the kingdom of heaven above all else. I cannot fail because I seek the truth. And the truth is my, I seek the truth of what I am. I seek the truth of my essential nature, my essence, which I share with as the extension of God's essence. My essence, whose essential nature is joy, is peace, is love. 
If God is that, and God extended and, and created the son, sonship from the essence extension of himself, then I, as that essence extension, must be that. And that's what I seek to know above all else. I want to know myself. When I know myself, I know my God. I hope this makes clear sense. I hope this has brought a deeper non-dual clarity of understanding into that which you are have always been, will always be our shared essence with God's loving essence. Stop there. Thank you for joining me.